in the last stream we were working on unlocking the diamond and emerald fragments inside of the light gray colored stone and right at the end of the last episode we did hand in the research paper for those diamond and emerald fragments and so now we should be able to throw down some of this light gray colored stone and if we break it with our prospectors pick we get too much stuff that is because as per usual here we need to go back to oz r us and we need to disable the crystal fragments i am going to just go ahead and throw these crystal fragments here into the void we could craft them of course into crystal orb but I really don't think it's necessary, and we're already uh, pretty full up on some of these chests here. Uh, they're clogging up quite a bit. We are running into some slight issues with the simple storage network not putting things in the right places. I'm not quite sure why. I did change the priority on this cable to negative 10. It's a smaller ghost first, so the lower the number, uh, this should the, the higher the priority, so this should be the highest priority. And uh, I've set these to five, so these should be the last resort, but for some reason, the, uh, the network is still occasionally putting items into these drawers. The Twitch champ was suggesting that it could be the case that the simple storage network doesn't like recognize the void upgrades and so it's possible that this drawer is full and therefore it looks at the drawer knows that it's full and decides to put them into these chests instead if that's the case then we might just have to keep upgrading the drawers at least until we can switch over to a different storage mod but anyway for the time being we do now have access to the diamond and emerald fragments and so much like with all of the fragments that we've unlocked previously we should now be able to craft those into diamond and emerald ore and the most important part here is the uh, is the diamond ore for us because my plan for today's stream is going to be to try and automate the production of advanced and elite technium over here we already have production of basic technium and now that we've automated the production of smooth stone this is basically fully backed up we've got 64 basic technium here we then have 64 more in the item hopper ready to refill this drawer when we use some and then in here we've got another 60 vol basic technium so we've got three stacks ready to go and we also have a stack of all of the items required and so effectively we have about four stacks of basic technium ready to go five stacks if you include the fact that all of these drawers are almost all full we've got 36 cold cook but we're almost ready to fill in a fifth stack should we need it which is good because we are going to need to use some of that basic technium to make advanced technium and then we're going to have to use that advanced technium to automate elite technium and as i mentioned at the end of the last episode really the only thing holding us back in terms of getting this automation up and running was the ability to make the gear working die and now that we have access to diamonds via this diamond ore which i believe we should be putting into the pulverizer for maximum diamond output uh, but now that we have access to that we can of course make that gear working die and we can use a multi-servo press to make both plates and gears which is going to allow us to very easily automate things like aluminum sheet metal steel gears lead sheet metal and electrum gears so we do, of course, at some point want to set up miners for the diamond and emerald ore. For now, I'm going to leave that right there. The reason for that is because we don't have much space currently. My plan for today is to replace the colored stone here and also to move the lava miner. If we get rid of both of those, that is going to free up space for us to put down peridot and sapphire miners. The reason that we need peridot and sapphire miners is that we have to automate the production of these amethyst shards, which are made in the induction smelter with those three gems in order to make the elite technium and so for today we're not going to get diamond and emerald ores automated but next time we'll come back and uh, we'll look at setting up like a new space with more slots for more miners one thing i would like to do real quick before we start working on the automation of the advanced and elite technium is i would like to upgrade the capstones on my copper ore setup because over here we're mining copper ore but right now it actually doesn't have any caps it has two aluminum blocks and two coal blocks which kind of averages out to nothing because you need to have four of the same blocks in order for it to have any effect and if we check out our network over here we have got very little copper we got 602 but compared to the 6,000 silver or 5,000 gold or 4,000 iron we're not making the copper anywhere near as fast and it is a resource that we are using quite regularly and so real quick i think what we'll do here is just get four of these ruby capstones and we'll use those over on the copper miner 
I am going to end up slowing down coal production with this, because if we were to go ahead and break... Actually, I guess coal production is also already slow because of these aluminum blocks. I guess we're going to indirectly slow down iron. This is kind of the problem with the setup that we've created. Right now, iron is going somewhat fast at 100 ticks. If we get rid of these four capstones, though, iron is going to go down to 220 ticks. It's going to become like half as, as fast, which is not ideal. But at the same time, I don't really want to speed iron up because then we, uh, we end up creating this cascading effect where I have to kind of upgrade everything. Because if I upgrade iron, then I have to upgrade aluminum, and then I have to upgrade, I guess, nothing after that. So I could just upgrade iron and aluminum, which I might do, actually. I might get four more ruby blocks, because I also don't want to start running out of iron anytime soon either. But um, I don't want to upgrade everything with ruby blocks, even though we could, because I don't think our system in its current state is fast enough to handle it. And we also don't really need it. We're doing pretty well on all of our resources at the moment. And so I'm kind of going to hold off until we you know need more resources before i kind of invest in upgrading all of the infrastructure to make those resources faster but just to make sure that we don't get uh, any slower on our iron and aluminum production let's just quickly swap out these remaining capstones like this and this and now we should be producing the copper at least substantially faster we're producing one every 50 ticks as opposed to one every 220 ticks so it's over four times faster than it was previously which should hopefully bring copper up in line with some of the other resources that we're producing a lot more of now that that's taken care of let's start by looking at automating the advanced technium ingot so for this we're going to need an induction smelter to make the end bar that is not going to be a problem do we have what it takes to make an induction smelter we do we just need one more blast furnace which we have and boom, induction smelter taken care of. We then need to make the steel gears and the aluminum sheet metal. So both of these require multi-servo presses. Ideally, we would get one for each resource here. I was going to say, I don't think we have enough machine frames. That is fine. Surprisingly, glass is uh, the only thing we're missing here. That is not a problem. Let me go and throw that in there. I'll also throw a couple of stacks of coal down here just so we don't have to keep filling that up over and over again. While we wait for that, we also need bronze ingots, a block of iron, not a problem, and two Constantan gears. The Constantan gears we don't have, but I do think we might have some Constantan lying around. We do indeed. We've only got enough, though, to make two Constantan gears, and we do need uh, four of these multi-server presses. So real quick, let me do this, and let's make a couple of these. We could probably do with more than two machine frames because we're going to need even more machines to make the Signalum, Electrum, and Lead before the end of the episode. So uh, real quick, let me grab some more Electrum gears. Do we have any Electrum lying around? We do. And let me also grab some copper and some nickel so I can make some more Constantin for the multi-server press. All right, so a little bit more Constantin and Electrum later. We have the gears, and we should be able to make, hopefully, two of these multi-server presses. And one of these requires a gear working die. The gear working die here requires a diamond gear. We are going to have to run four diamonds through the metal press. That's fine. And we also need four invar plates, which I'm going to assume that, yeah, we do not have those. That is fine. Now let's do the diamonds first. That's going to get us our diamond gear. And then as soon as that's done, we can swap out the gear mold for the plate mold, throw in the invar, and that's going to get us the invar plates. So uh, the way this works, the multi server press by default can only make plates. If we look here, you'll see that uh, putting an ingot in makes the plate version of that ingot. However, if you put in the gear working die, you can then change the effect of the multi server press to where it will no longer make plates, but it will only make gears. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to use it to make steel gears and aluminum plates. And then we're also going to get another one of the auto crafting tables, these ones right here, to automate the crafting of aluminum plates into the aluminum sheet metal that we need in order to actually craft the advanced technium. Again, just four more wooden hoppers to make that happen. Not a problem whatsoever. And now, really, I think the only thing that we don't have is automated steel because we can automate invar with the induction smelter we just have to export iron and nickel we can automate aluminum sheet metal with the multi-servo press and the auto crafting table we can automate the lava bottles fairly easily by moving the bottling machine and getting i guess another auto crafting table to auto produce the bottles and then of course moving our lava production to pump lava automatically into the bottling machine and we also already have the basic technium up and running the only thing we can't do currently is steel because we don't currently have a way to produce steel automatically and there are a few options here actually the first option is that we could invest in a better blast furnace this right here is the improved blast furnace 
which can be automated. Right now, this cannot be automated. Unlike the coke oven, you can't hop it into or out of the crude blast furnace. You have to put things in manually. Although, there is a recipe that just involves the induction smelter here with coal coke, which could be a decent solution. I imagine it's going to be pretty fast. And of course, the blast furnace already requires coal coke as well. I think the blast furnace might be better, though, just from an efficiency standpoint, because the induction smelter, I think, is going to use one coal coke per steel, whereas the blast furnace can produce multiple pieces of steel for one coal coke. And so it's probably going to be in our best interest to just upgrade the blast furnace, which thankfully isn't too difficult. To do it, we need to basically take down our entire blast furnace. So we'll take this bottom one here. I... You know what, I'll just go ahead and take the whole thing. It's gonna be easier. Actually, never mind. We don't have uh, enough pickaxe durability to do that. So I'll just take the bottom one here. And essentially, we just have to craft each piece of blast brick with a steel plate. So over here, we will uh, go ahead and throw in 27 steel ingots, turn those into 27 steel plates. We can then craft those steel plates with the pre-existing blast brick to get the reinforced blast brick. And then essentially rebuilding the same structure, but with a hopper on top is going to give us the improved blast furnace, which can be fully automated. And of course, we're going to build that over on the other platform there, just to make it a little easier to distribute things to the advanced technium. Although to be fair, we don't really need to, much like with the basic technium, a lot of what we're going to be doing is using simple storage network to export to a draw controller. And so we could, if we wanted to set up the, uh, the steel production over here, which we could do. I do need to move the lava though as well to the bottling machine. I'll probably move it over. I think I'll move it over just to have a nice line of machines that we can potentially upgrade in the future for each of the techniums. Once the steel plates are done, boom and boom, this is now taken care of. And uh, if we quickly grab a hopper, we should be able to construct this over here. Okay, so I just did a little bit of kind of planning as to where we're gonna put stuff. Uh, this cross here is the uh, the five by five for the lava miner that we're gonna move over. And then this two by three here is going to be the bottling plant. And so right here is where I'm gonna put the blast furnace. So essentially, uh, I made this five wide. The reason for that is that you can upgrade this blast furnace using what are called preheaters. Uh, which I think we're going to do because it allows you to make steel just that little bit faster at the cost of a little bit of power. So if we go ahead and, of course, build the standard 3x3 three three cube of reinforced blast brick, we then do have to put this hopper on the top like this, and then we can take our engineer's hammer, right-click on the front, and we have a new upgraded more slender blast furnace, which can now be automated. So the way this works is it is going to output its wares to the front. Do I have some more framed drawers, I do indeed. Let me throw one down right about here. This is where the steel is going to go. Now you can add preheaters to this, as I mentioned. The preheaters do require power, but they do make the blast furnace quite a bit faster. To make these, we need iron sheet metal, iron pipes, and an external heater. We have the iron pipes and nothing else. That is fine. Do we have what it takes to make two external heaters? I think the answer is yes. We need just some more copper plates though to make that happen. That it's not a problem. Uh, we do have our multi-server press here, and if we get a few more lapidary dynamos, we can probably make this happen quite quickly, and we can use the multi-server press instead of going back to the metal press to actually make the um, the plates. So essentially, what I think we'll do, we're gonna need more drawers. Let me go and get uh, some more framed drawers here real quick, because I do wanna have framed drawers for basically everything that we produce. I'll get a couple of these, and then we will uh, custom texture these to look, of course, like our smooth stone and our dark oak. Probably gonna have to do some more dark oak mining at some point fairly soon, but for now, this, this, and this should get the job done. And essentially, let me think about where we're gonna put these multi-server presses, because we want to have one that produces plates for the sheet metal. So I might put that one here, and then we also want to have one that produces steel gears, for the steel gears, I might just move this kind of over here then, like that, and have the steel ingots pumped directly into the multi-servo press so that we can then just produce steel gears. And in fact, it could look better. I keep forgetting we can't use the carry-on mod with the machines. It could look better though if we just have the multi-servo press here and kind of pump up and then maybe have another draw for steel gears right about here, like that. And then of course, we'll connect all of that up with link cable in the future. For now though, if we do this and quickly rotate that to face towards the multi-server press, we can then fill that up with lapis and then we can use that to produce our copper plates. Boom and boom. And as per usual, if we have a spare 
integral component, which of course we don't, that would be too easy. We, uh, we could have made this a little bit faster, like this. Nice. And so that's going to get us the copper plates. Once we have uh, at least four copper plates, although we might need eight if we're going to make two preheaters, because you do only make one external heater at a time, we can then come back over here, get an external preheater. We're missing just one LV wire coil. That's actually fine. We'll get some more of those. That gets us our first preheater. And then do we have three more plates? We totally do. Let's stop you for the time being. We'll go one, two, and three. Boom. And then that should be everything for two preheaters. Never mind. We are missing iron plates, but we have those ready to go. Boom and boom. Cool. So the way that this works is you put these down right here next to the uh, the blast furnace and uh, you want to make sure they go down the right way i think if you place them down the wrong way like this you can use the hammer to rotate them to face into the blast furnace at which point they're going to work just fine from there we have a couple of options of course as to how we get power into them we could use the lv conduits but we do have these flux ducts and so what i'm probably going to do is just run flux ducts ideally from the top here we'll get it right eventually uh, get rid of this one and this one and then we'll kind of just run these around to the other one and then we can use either one lapidary dynamo or one other kind of main source of power to connect all this together so we'll do something like this run it around the back and obviously connect it there with one more flux duct like so and now if we provide power to this it is going to make steel just that little bit faster and then the final thing that we need to do is pump iron and coal cook into the top and this is where things could get a little tricky because i think what we're going to have to do is kind of massively increase the amount of coal cook that we're producing because right now it's coming in and we are backing up on it but we're only backing up on it because we're not actively making technium this coke oven is not particularly fast we have a few options we could put down more coke ovens which is kind of the option i'm leaning towards alternatively there is also the pyrolyzer from thermal expansion this produces coal coke with a byproduct of tar and creosote oil we could leave this coke oven here for the production of coal coke for the basic technium and we could potentially look at getting a pyrolyzer for the blast furnace it does look like it requires blaze powder though which currently i don't think we have the ability to get there might be a way for us to make it potentially but i think the easiest solution is probably just going to be to set up a few more coke ovens potentially just like two more maybe and then use that as the fuel for our blast furnace the twitch chat here has pointed out that we can in fact make blaze powder by pulverizing redstone flux coils and then we could of course use the recipe right here that allows us to turn five blaze powder into one blaze rod however we don't have access to nether bricks they're actually what's going to stop us making the pyrolyzer if we check here you'll see that uh, the nether egg quest isn't until much further on in the pack it's right down here under hellish tech and in order to get this, we have to first unlock the Nether Materials research paper, which requires ultimate technium, which we don't yet have, nor do we have the ability to make it. So for the time being, we are just going to have to set up multiple coke ovens, and then we're going to export the coal coke and the iron to the top of this blast furnace. We also need to account for the slag as well. In this setup, the slag gets ejected to the back, like so. And so we'll just throw in slag like that. And then we'll, of course, throw a void upgrade into that drawer to make sure that if we do end up with any excess slag, which is likely because we're not currently using that slag for anything, that uh, any excess slag we do get will just be deleted. So we'll do this and this. And then I'm fairly certain that if we get an export cable, we should just be able to place that export cable onto the top of the blast furnace. And much like we've been doing with our other machines, if we get stock upgrades, we should just be able to tell our system to keep, you know, one iron and one coal cook, or maybe two iron and two coal cook in the blast furnace at any given time. I did make a slight change to our bronze induction smelter. I basically just doubled up on the amount that we're sending because it takes three copper and one tin to make one set of bronze basically initially we had this set to exactly three copper and one tin i've since changed that to six copper and two tin because now there's no downtime obviously it doesn't matter at the minute because we're banked up but if you just do three and one then it makes one set of bronze and you have to wait like a few seconds or maybe like a second or so before it then produces the next batch whereas if you set it to six and two it will produce the first batch that it's already working on the second batch when it kind of then refills back up to six and two. Just a small little tweak 
for efficiency there. Um, anyway, I am going to quickly move over the lava miner and the bottling plant. And I'll probably also craft up a few more exporters, link cables, and importers as well, so we can set up things like uh, more lapidary dynamos to get our blast furnace, and of course, all of our other machines running. And then from there, we'll look at setting up the remainder of what is needed to actually get this automation up and running. All right, so I was just trying to figure out what we were going to do here about the lava. My first thought was just to kind of delete it all, you know, cover it with cobblestone and then just craft more lava buckets. But the Twitch chat did remind me that we do have access to the reservoir here, which is an item from Thermal Expansion that kind of acts like a big bucket like a, or like a tank that you can carry around with you. It says stores fluid and refills equipment items can also be used to pick up and place fluids. And they can hold 20 buckets of fluid at once. And so I figured we might as well go ahead and make one of these the only thing we're missing really to make this is the rubber at the top we need one piece of cured rubber which we make by smelting regular rubber which we can either make with vines and a bucket of water or with dandelions and a bucket of water right now we have neither of those however we do of course have the ability to craft regular saplings into other saplings i don't know if these are mangrove saplings are new or not but uh, we don't need them my thought process here is if we get four jungle samplings we should then be able to grow that and uh, and hopefully get eight vines fairly easily one two three four give that a quick shift it's going to build a big old tree for us and then if we grab our shears we should be able to do something like this that's more than enough do we have a bucket of water we do indeed we can go boom and boom get our rubber throw the rubber of course into our jumbo furnace and then we can use the reservoir to move the lava more easily from where it is now to our new lava miner so let's go ahead and take this and i think we should just be able to right click to pick up lava i don't know if we have to oh yeah we do have to press v to change mode so this empty and fill we want it set to fill mode by default oh there's also a little arrow on the uh on the reservoir itself that is very useful so let's take this and if we break the pre-existing glass on the top here we should then be able to just right click to suck up these lava source blocks and then if we press V again and change this to empty mode, we can then just place it back down like so. Cool. And so it does only hold 20. That is fine though. I'm basically gonna take as many as we can here and then we'll head over to the new location. I'll probably grab some more of the uh, glass and support frames. Uh, actually, we don't even need the support frames. I'll uh, take some of the glass we've already got as well as some of the glass out of the system and then just start rebuilding over there and move the whole thing over. Real quick here, the Twitch chat is telling me that if we get the Tinker's Workbench, which, unlike what the name would suggest, is not from the Tinker's Construct mod, it's from Thermal Expansion, but I'm being told that if we do get it, we should be able to upgrade our reservoir to hold more liquid. It used to be the case that you could upgrade these just by crafting them, but it looks like in newer versions of Thermal Expansion, we have to get the Tinker's Workbench, and then we can use this to upgrade our reservoir. I think... My assumption is going to be that we can take an integral component here and use that as a way of upgrading it. Uh, there used to be upgrade kits that you could use to, uh, to upgrade things like this. Uh, real quick, let me uh, craft back some of this glass into uh, regular glass so that we can actually craft this integral component. And then if I place that in here, does that increase the size? I don't think so. Although this might need power, actually. That's my bad. Let me take this. Let me take this. Let me take this. And uh, let's go put it somewhere that has power, like here. I'm also being told I need to change the mode on the bench as well. So it might not have needed power, but uh, let's throw in this and then maybe this. And boom. Oh, yeah, look at that. It now holds 40 buckets. Cool. And so I imagine you could put in higher tier integral components if you wanted to increase the amount even further. We took it from 20 to 40 with the 2x scale factor on the hardened integral component. I assume you would take it from 20 to 60 with the reinforced and then from 20 to 80 with the uh, the resonant. So that's pretty cool. And now we can just go ahead and grab all of the lava into this one reservoir all at once, making sure that we are in fill mode. The trickiest part is reaching all the way down and we might not have to. We should be able to just break some glass here and then just pick up the remainder of the lava. Nice. And that saves us using more glass because now we can just go ahead and break all of this glass and, of course, take the miner with us. And now resetting up this miner should be pretty easy. One thing we've not done yet is make a diamond wand, but we can now do that using one basic technium, given that we've got 
uh, I think over four stacks available to us, because we do also have some basic technium actually just in a chest somewhere. Um, I feel like we can splurge a little bit on a diamond wand here, which is just gonna make it that little bit easier as well when it comes to doing stuff like this. All right, so not too long later, we've moved over the bottling machine and the entirety of the lava fluid absorbing setup. I did have to move the bottling machine. I was hopeful that when we were assembling it, we could have the conveyor belt going the other way because my initial intention was to have it here with the conveyor belt going from right to left. But it turns out the conveyor belt can only go one way. And so instead I just moved the whole machine over to this side instead of having it kind of facing outwards into the world. And it also turns out that you can just put this fluid pump here directly on top of the fluid absorber uh, with a lever and pipes. And it will just take the fluid and pump it around into the bottling machine. This totally does work. And much like with some of our other miners, we should go ahead and get ourselves the fastest camps possible for this setup. People have pointed out that Signalum camps are slightly faster. Uh, the Ruby camps produce lava every 50 ticks, whereas the Signalum is 40 ticks. So this is not technically the fastest we have available to us, but they are substantially easier to make compared to the Signalum caps, and they get the job done. So now that we have the miner here and we have the bottling machine, we can really start getting to work on putting everything together. So we've got our multi-server press here. This one is going to produce the aluminum plates. And so for that, we just need an export cable. That export cable could probably just go on the bottom. So one thing we are going to have to do is find out where our pre-existing cable line is. It's right here. Do I have more smooth stone that has been chiseled? I do. So I'm going to go ahead and just run, I guess from... Does it go underneath? It must do, right? I think I connected it there. I did. So we've, I feel like we might as well run from the center like this. We can run a new network cable underneath the base over to the new area. For that, we are going to need more smooth stone slabs. And we're definitely going to need more than eight of those. Are we... We might be out of stone completely because I think all of our stone currently is being turned into smooth stone. There's a small chance that there might be some back top. There isn't. That is unfortunate. We could, of course, smelt some cobblestone the old-fashioned way if we wanted to, but uh, we'll come back to that in a second. Over here, we are probably just gonna export to the bottom of this. So I'll put an export cable like that, and then of course we'll run cabling around to the main area. That is gonna produce the aluminum plates. Now, we still don't really have access to any way of moving items easily. We can of course make the extractor, but the extractor has the uh, downside of potentially spewing. And so what we'll probably do is we'll probably get a framed drawer like that. Uh, we'll probably throw a storage downgrade in there so that we don't turn all of our aluminum into aluminum plates. That would not be ideal. And then we'll probably just end up throwing a link cable onto this to allow us to access this for the next stage of the setup, which seems a little crazy because the next stage of the setup is gonna go right next to it. And that is of course the basic auto crafting table. So for this, we need a place to store the plates. Ooh, actually, I think we could probably make this better if I think about it for two seconds. If we were, I might end up losing this cable down here, but I'd rather lose this than lose the uh, the multi-server press, which I'm gonna pick up here. My thought process actually is if we move this up, we should be able to make this work in a better way. Because if, for example, we put the multi-server press maybe here, we can then have that auto eject to a draw here next to it like this, and then because this basic auto crafting table is just crafting with aluminum plates, this should totally work. Because the plates will get sent over here. In here, we're just gonna teach this how to craft four aluminum plates, which we do not have, that would have been too easy. One, two, three, four, let's quickly go and make some over here. But uh, that is then gonna craft those into the sheet metal, and then from there we can just go ahead and hop it down into another draw like that, and then this is the draw that we want to connect up with the link cable because then we can take the sheet metal and export it to li most likely another draw controller. How are we doing on tech books? We have zero tech books. That's not ideal. We can probably get a couple more from completing quests here. That takes us to four. I do want to purchase another draw controller, I think, because again here we've got one, two, three, four, five resources that we need to have access to. And so one two by two draw isn't quite gonna cut it. That is completely fine. We can, of course, purchase this for four tech books. And we do have the ability to make more tech books should we want. Of course, the tech books uh, at this point in time are just uh, basic technium and bronze, which we do have a fairly decent amount of. So we'll put you here. And then do we have some more of those two by two draws? We totally do. If we do this and 
this, we can get two more of those, and much like we've done over here, we can just place those down like this. Of course, make sure those are locked and begin putting in the things that we actually want to make. Speaking of which, let's grab those aluminum plates and then over here, we're just gonna go and uh, turn this off temporarily. Uh, those are invalid plates. We wanna go one, two, three, four. Shift left click, left click. That is now locked to the aluminum sheet metal recipe and that's gonna make the sheet metal for us. Perfect. So that is all good. We are still gonna have to export, of course, to the multi server press, but that's fine. We can put an export cable down like this and we can put a link cable probably just on the bottom of this, like that. That's fine. And again, we'll connect all those up in a second. We're gonna export to the bottom of this. So we wanna make sure the bottom is set to blue. And uh, these do not like it when you change the inputs like that. So I'm probably gonna have to break and replace it. Fantastic. We then just set the right to output. And we wanna make sure that auto output is enabled so that it pushes automatically into the framed draw. We do also need some power here. And so I'll probably also do something like this. At some point in the not so distant future, we are going to unlock the ability to uh, move power around wirelessly with the uh, Flux Networks mod. Once we have that, we can uh, hopefully kind of centralize our power somewhere and then just send it around the base without having to put down these dynamos everywhere we go. But for now, we'll do this as well to make sure that that is also connected to the network and can receive the lapis to give power to that machine. Now, over here, we have the bottling machine. The bottling machine is interesting because we need to produce glass bottles automatically and pump them into, oh no, we don't pump them in, we place them in over here. So what we'll probably do here is we'll throw down a draw like that. I don't actually know if this can eject from the draw. If I put a glass bottle in there, can that pull from that draw? It cannot. Okay, that's fine. In that case, we have to move it up by one and, uh, and throw down a hopper. I don't know, did I put the wrong draw down here? I don't remember putting a, a storage downgrade in the wrong drawer, but maybe I did. Let me put that storage downgrade back in over there and let's uh, break that. That could also be a, a bug of some kind. No, it definitely is a bug. That's fine. Uh, instead, let's do this and we'll get another hopper to pump that into the bottling plant. And then from there, we are going to have to automate the production of glass bottles. Then... Shouldn't be too difficult. We do have sand being made for us automatically. Again, I'm gonna make just a bunch of those. I really shouldn't have done that with my dark oak. I should have done that with my regular oak. That's my bad. But um, it shouldn't be too difficult. We do have the ability to automate glass indefinitely. It's really just a case, I think, of getting another basic auto crafting table and using that to craft the glass into glass bottles. So once again, we just need more crafting tables and more coke oak and then more wooden hoppers. One, two, three, and four. Fantastic. Boom. And I guess the tricky part is where do we want to set this up? Because the glass bottles need to end up in this drawer here. I might rotate that drawer to face this way. And we can go ahead and uh, probably lock that straight away here to glass bottles like that. Again, we can also throw a storage downgrade into that drawer because we don't want all of our glass being turned into glass bottles, at least not in, uh, in an ideal world, we also need to automate the uh, the smelting of glass because we have sand coming in, but we don't have glass smelting automated. I think for that, we're probably going to want to use a redstone furnace because we could use the jumbo furnace, but the jumbo furnace is quite big and also requires a continuous supply of coal, which is fine, but it's just one more thing to export. Whereas the redstone furnace runs on power, which is gonna make it substantially easier for us to use in the future as we expand out our power infrastructure going forward. Real quick, actually, Twitch chat has pointed out here that it is an induction smelter that we need, not a redstone furnace. Um, we do have an induction smelter, but this is for a different craft. So um, ideally, we're going to get another one of those for the glass. For whatever reason in this pack, the, uh, the glass recipe has been added to the induction smelter over the redstone furnace. Over here, we do have a uh, machine frame ready to go. Boom and boom. Fantastic, so we can send our sand to here to turn it into glass. And then from there, we'll put the glass into a drawer. And I think we'll do the same kind of thing we've done previously where we have that drawer directly above an auto crafting table. And so it's possible that we might be able to, I don't know how much we want to squeeze things in here, but we could potentially just put it here. If we rotate this to face forward, we could have our glass drawer here, and then we could have our final drawer here. And that would kind of work just fine. Then we put our induction smelter right about here. And again, we just put another exporter 
on that like so. Uh, so this time we're going to set the bottom again to input and the right side to output, auto eject on, quickly replace this export cable. And again, the same idea here, the sand is going to be exported, smelted the glass, sent over to here, and then this is going to be used to auto craft the glass bottles, shift left click, left click, that is now set up completely. And then if we get another hopper and another frame draw with the storage downgrade, we've essentially automated glass bottles. And uh, if we were to go ahead and connect that up as well with link cable, we could then just export that over to here. So we'll just put an export cable like there. And I guess we might as well at that point hook it up like that to the system. And then we can just export the glass bottles from here round to there. Okay, so I've run some more cable round. I just smelted some more cobblestone in the jumbo furnace and made some more network cable. And I think we should be good to go. I've moved the lapidary dynamo as well here. My thought process being that we can just use this one dynamo ideally to power both of these machines. So I've shimmied that back uh, to the left here from here where it was before, and I've moved the, uh, the cable as well. So let's start exporting some of the stuff that needs exporting here. Lampis we still have in abundance. We could have used the uh, the Sterling Dynamo that we made in the last episode, but we're still making way more Lampis than we are coal. So I feel like for the time being, uh, Lampis makes more sense. Let's do this. We could again use a stock upgrade, but I don't think we need to. I think exporting all of the Lampis is fine. Occasionally there is a visual glitch where it doesn't look like it's connected, but it is connected. So uh, just check if it's actually going, um, if it is pumping the items in, you don't have to worry about it. If it isn't pumping the items in, Try and break it and replace it, and sometimes that will work. Uh, over here, we want to say you should export glass bottles like that, and uh, that should hopefully start pulling them from here round to here. It looks like it totally does. I am going to do, I think this is fine. I have done that here. I've put cobblestone into these hoppers again just to, uh, to, to stop the backlog. Otherwise, we end up with, you know, not just one stack, but six or seven or eight stacks backed up with uh, the whole setup here. So I have kind of put these in to stop that getting pushed out. I think this should be fine though and so all of this is looking pretty good we do need a draw at the end here to allow the lava to actually go somewhere like the bottles of lava to go somewhere and it also needs power of course which we'll get to in just a second over here though let's start exporting the aluminum to the multi-server press and the sand to the induction smelter so aluminum we should have a decent amount of it we've got six thousand beautiful and then sand we've got two thousand just because we've not really upgraded the draw so if we send the aluminum into here. Again, no stock upgrade really required. I think a stack of aluminum there is fine. And here, sand can also go up. Again, not quite sure why it disconnects there, but it does work. Uh, maybe a quick refresh. Nope, doesn't do anything. That is also fine. Boom, boom, and boom. I don't know if we're going to need slot seals in this. Like, I don't know if it's going to try and put more than one stack of sand in. Never mind. It totally cannot do that. So that's perfectly fine. So that's going to send glass over to here. I don't think either of these have downgrades. Never mind. These two do, but these two don't. So we could do with two more downgrades here. Thankfully, we did make a bunch of flint earlier in the series. And so we do have what it takes to make quite a few of these, which is very nice indeed. I assume this doesn't work. It does not. That is fine. We do have a bunch of chests. And so I should be able to make even more of these two by two drawers. And I'm just going to craft all of those into upgrade templates so that we can just make these in the future without having to worry about it too, too much. Uh, boom and boom. Fantastic. And so... We should be basically good to go here. Let me do this, and let's also do this, just to make sure that's locked to the right thing. And then let's also do this, and as soon as we get our first aluminum plate here, we can then go ahead and do this. Cool. And so that's going to get pulled down and turned into aluminum sheets, and then the aluminum sheets uh, just need to be exported over to here. Uh, I am going to put an export cable like this. There are a few things that we probably don't need to export, it depends on how I want to do it. The Twitch chat has been recommending trim here. And uh, of course, this is just oak trim. We could use a better looking trim because there are a few things we could do. For example, we could do something like this and that would connect this aluminum sheet metal up to the straw controller and therefore allow the advanced crafting table to access it. I don't think this looks particularly good. Obviously, we could make it look a little bit better by potentially having some of the oak trim like in the floor. But again, the trim doesn't match the connected texture of the, uh, the brick bordered smooth stone here. And so I also don't think that's going to look particularly good one that we could use trim for though is uh, this lava bottle setup because the lava bottles are going to be produced here and putting a link cable down just to pump it back around to here seems a bit unnecessary and so what we could potentially do is uh, get some more of the framed trim and then texture that to look like our floor smooth stone so this stuff which we don't have any left of actually that is fine let me quickly grab some smooth stone and let's quickly go and uh, get some more of the uh, the smooth smooth stone that we're using for our drawers 
That's this one right here, polished smooth stone. We can then do this and this, and we could potentially just put that framed trim right there. And that does connect that up. I don't know how I feel about that. We'll see how it goes. We, given that we already have a cable here, putting a link cable on top of that would also kind of be fine. So I might end up just using the link cable anyway, but we'll see. We'll see. For now, let's just get it up and running and working, and then we can tweak it after the fact. So power is needed here. You know my current port of call when it comes to uh, to power generation. That is yet another lapidary dynamo. Let's take another one of you, and then let's, for now, let's just whack this down kind of directly on here like this, and we can do, I don't know why sometimes it, kind of just rotates back and forth for a while and then sometimes it does what you want it to do maybe it's like directionally based i think the crescent hammer does like the full gamut of rotations so maybe the crescent hammer is the way to go anyway once we got that down of course just another exporter is all we need and yeah i'm kind of thinking now that this is, is just going to get in the way so i'm thinking maybe we do get rid of this trim and we instead just put a link cable here and as silly as it is we're going to export from this link cable to this exporter because then it's going to allow us to do this and then we can just run one unified cable down into the ground instead of having to run a second cable up to that lapidary dynamo, right? If we had a trim right here, we'd have to go around that trim to get to this lapidary dynamo, which I um, I just don't think would look particularly great. And so that should bring the bottling plant online, assuming that this uh, 40 redstone flux per tick is enough for the bottling plant, which it looks like it is. Good stuff. Over here, we do want to get another storage downgrade. Fantastic, we'll whack you in there, and that should be good to go. We're going to go ahead and take one of these, put it in up here, and we'll tell this guy to export the lava bottles. Again, we could use stock upgrades, but I don't think they're necessary here. I think this is fine. We'll do the same with the aluminum sheet metal. That is also required up here, and we'll tell this guy to export aluminum sheet metal. Nice. We will also take a basic technium, add that to one of these drawers, and then tell the system to export the basic technium over here as well. We do want to keep a stack of that in here as well, also necessary. And so now we just need the invar and we need the steel gears. So over here, things are almost ready to go. I think what we'll do, we'll move this because what we can probably do is just get a few more flux ducts and use those to connect up the, uh, the multi-server press as well. For that, it looks like we do need more glass. Thankfully, we are producing glass. Whether or not we have an excess is a different question though, because I think it looks like we don't have an excess. We uh, we do only need like one glass, and so I can just steal some as it's made to make the uh, the flux ducts here. One and two, fantastic. And then I'm kind of just thinking that I might do something like this. We don't technically need it on both sides, but I think it's going to look nicer if it's symmetrical as opposed to having it just come around on one side. And so that's going to get power, and then now we can just drop another you know lapidary dynamo on the back like this. And from there, we can also connect our other exporter. So let's quickly grab some of the cobblestone, get a little nerd pole going here. And if we drop an exporter here, we can connect that up here. And then it's just a case of kind of running down the back and connecting that to the main line. Once we've got this connected up, again, we will fill in the floor, of course, after all this is done. But once that's connected up, we can export lapis to the lapidary dynamo, what else is new? And over here, we can export both iron and coal coke into the blast furnace that should start filling up hopefully with both of those it might fill up on the iron first and then the cock afterwards but that should do the job the preheaters are both full on power and so as soon as the cock starts making its way in there we should hopefully see steel coming in pretty quickly again i'm going to keep going with the downgrades i should probably just make a bunch of downgrades so i have them in my inventory and i don't have to keep making them manually every time we need one but i am going to throw a downgrade in here and in here as well and yeah, that is working. And you'll see the steel is coming in a lot faster than it was previously, which I'm very happy to see. We do need to get the uh, gear working die. We did make the diamond gear for it earlier, but we didn't actually make the gear working die itself. Once we have it, we can put that in like so. And now we need to export the steel from here up to here. This is where it gets a little bit tricky because I put this here thinking we could just pump it up. But of course, that's not how that works, Isaac. So we are going to have to get uh, like a, an export cable there. And running an export cable there is going to be awkward just because of how all of this is set up. Like, get it? Like, the fact that we can't cover the export cables is going to have to just come out of the ground and into the bottom there, which I don't love. But for the time being, I think it's just going to have to be how we do it. Something like this. Ideally, connecting to the bottom of that, though. I don't know if we can force it to connect to the bottom of that. Yeah, no, we might have to 
do this. It seems that, um, annoyingly, using the carry-on mod with these draws breaks the connected texture. I wonder if I, like, leave and rejoin the game, if that's going to get fixed or not. I'm not sure. That does mean we could just put a link cable here, though. Like that. And then we could use this to export the, uh, the steel up into the multi-server press. Like that. Fantastic. That's going to make the gears. The gears are going to get exported to the top, like so. And then we just need to put a link cable onto that top draw and we should be good to go again that's going to be easily done with a little bit of cobblestone building here let's do one of these and one of those and now we should be able to access the steel gears and you guessed it from there we're just going to take one of those steel gears and drop it into one of these drawers just as soon as we add it to the export list let's do that and let's do this and now it's just invar i think invar is the only thing left that we are not making automatically. We do have a induction smelter for it though. I don't know. I was thinking we could potentially, I've done this before, which is why there's a spare block down here. I keep falling down uh, into the, the wire section. It's just a little too low to jump out of. Um, I was wondering if I could put it like here, maybe the induction smelter, that could work. And then I could potentially swap the lapidary dynamo to the other side. If we were in the, like in the interest of maximum compactness, we could put the induction smelter down right here if we wanted it to face the same way as the other machines we could do that and then now we can have that input from the bottom and then output to the right like that and then from there we can just drop another draw down like so that's going to hold our invar and my thought process here is that if we take the lapidary dynamo and i also take the uh export cable here we could do this and then just move the lapidary dynamo over to this side like that of course replace down the export cable right about here make sure that is connected up and then uh, export the lapis and we can fill it up manually as well and that should be good to go this is the only situation where i think we are going to need the stock upgrade because much like with the bronze we don't want the induction smelter filling up with either just iron or just nickel we want kind of just the exact amount of iron and nickel in there to make two batches of Invar. So over here, trying our best not to fall into the floor, we're going to replace this with yet another export cable. Fantastic. And then in here, we're going to put in the stock upgrade and we're going to say that we want six iron and two nickel. I believe that's correct. That should do what we want it to do. Of course, as soon as we put down our last flux duct here, that's going to get power. We are almost certainly going to have to drop at least one integral component into the lapidary dynamo to allow it to power those machines because right now i think it's only producing 40 redstone flux per tick which i don't think is enough so let's do this and then over here it is uh, three iron and one nickel i believe oh no it's maybe two iron and one nickel yeah two iron and one nickel so i've done this incorrectly it's not a problem but uh we're gonna lower that down to four iron like that and that should be enough to make six invar. That invar is then going to go out to the right-hand side, which should be this side here. Uh, if we do something like this, make sure that is locked. And of course, make sure that has a link cable on it as well, like that. And we should pretty much be good to go now in terms of making the advanced technium. Let me try and figure out why I'm not exporting. It could be that this is facing the wrong way. That's facing the front. So that should be facing the back. And, oh, we need to turn off to eject on, of course, there we go. Beautiful. All right, cool. And of course, a storage downgrade, as per usual, goes in. And then all we need to do is once again, break our block here to escape, take out one invar, add that to the export list and drop it into here. And with that, I think we're finally onto something. <laughs> I think we've finally gotten somewhere. I do want to make sure this is locked to lava bottles as well. Good stuff. And it's very dense, but this uh, little Rube Goldberg machine that we have should make what we're after. So let's turn off auto crafting. Let's dump all of this stuff into our system. Let's grab four lava bottles, one basic technium, four steel gears, eight aluminum sheet metal. Oh, these need storage downgrades as well, right? Have I not put downgrades in here? Did I put downgrades in here? I must not have done because we've got like a billion sheet metal, which um, is not ideal. Let me do this and then yeah no, we got <laughs> way too much basic technique that's my bad uh, and also way too many lava bottles and way too much of the aluminum sheet metal let me do this 
And then uh, let's try putting some of this stuff back where it's supposed to be. You should be full up. You should also be full up. Uh, the rest for now is just going to have to go back into the system, which is, is not ideal, but is, uh, is how it is. Uh, the lava bottles, I'm, I'm just going to throw them away. I know it's a waste. But at the same time, we're making them automatically. I don't I don't want to clog up the system with them. Uh, so we'll just get rid of those. And then uh, the sheet metal I'll just put in the system for now. We might need that for something in the future. Okay, now that's taken care of, let's try this again. One, two, three, four. Let's do one, two, three, and four. I think that's correct. It is. We then need one, two, three, four of the steel gears. We're going to put you one, two, three, four. Of course, without that rogue steel gear up there. Uh, I'll then take uh, a basic Technium. I'm actually just going to put a full stack of Technium in here, like that, like preemptively, so that um, it just uses the Technium that we have. Also, uh, we should basically refill this drawer as well, back up to, to 64, and uh, make sure that you're refilled as well from our backlogged supply, because I don't want to be wasting any extra resources like filling this up again when we don't need to. Then, what else are we missing? We are missing the Invar. We need eight Invar, and I believe eight Sheet Metal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the rest is just in bar. Cool. Shift left click, left click. That's now saved and it's plugging it all in. We can go ahead and turn that on. And I think, chat, that we have done it. The um the lava bottles and stuff are gonna come in. Everything else should also come in shortly. And we should now have automated advanced technium ingots. Let's make sure there's a storage downgrade in there as well. We don't want to end up with billions of advanced technium. But yeah, no, that is totally working. Fantastic. So now, now, now. That is is done the next bit the next stage is doing the exact same thing with elite technium which uh, shouldn't take too long it's taken us a while to get to this point but that's because of all these big multi-blocks the elite technium is much easier i think we basically just need thermal expansion machines we need a we need to copy kind of this setup here for a couple of these recipes for the lead sheet metal it's the exact same as the aluminum sheet metal but just with lead for the Signalum, it's kind of the exact same as the Invar here. But instead of sending iron and nickel to the induction smelter, we're going to send uh, silver, copper, and redstone. We're going to send the silver and copper in ingot form, not in dust form. The Electrum gears are going to be easier than the steel gears, because whilst it does require another multi-server press with another gear working die, the Electrum is just another induction smelter with gold and silver, which we're going to put over here somewhere instead of another blast furnace, which makes it easier. And then the Amethyst shards, I just another induction smelter with the sapphire, the ruby, and the peridot. Really, the trickiest part um, is going to be getting the sapphire and peridot ores because we have to purchase those from the shop. So we need to get 24 tech books, which we should be able to do. We've got a bunch of uh, basic technium now. Uh, the only thing we're missing is bronze, but we have foolishly just burned all of our bronze, making a staggering amount of basic technium. That is my bad. I should not have done that. That's fine. Let's get um, some more bronze being made. And yeah, basically, I'm just going to go and kind of duplicate this setup, but for advanced technium. All right, so more of the same stuff later, and we're actually almost there on elite technium. So over here, we've got just a line of four sets of machines. We've got one multi-server press that is getting lead from the export cable, feeding that lead into the drawer. We then, of course, have another auto crafting table that turns the lead plates into lead sheet metal, and the lead sheet metal makes its way down into this drawer. All the drawers have downgrades. Over here, we've got an induction smelter. We're exporting the copper, silver, and redstone with the stock upgrade to make the signalum. There's enough in there for two batches of signalum. The signalum goes to the drawer, has a link cable. We're going to export that all over to here, and we need to buy one more uh, drawer controller. Over here, we've got two machines stacked on top of each other. We have gold and silver with the stock upgrade being exported to the induction smelter. That makes Electrum. The Electrum is then getting pushed up to the multi-server press, which is set to input from the bottom and output to the right. This has the gear working die, and it turns Electrum ingots into Electrum gears, which then get put here. This final induction smelter is currently not set up. This is going to take sapphires, rubies, and peridot and combine those into amethyst shards, and that's the last stage of the process because if we check here we've got sheet metal automated we've got signalum automated we've got electrum gears automated we've got advanced technium automated it's just the amethyst shards that we need to automate and much like for the draw controller if we want to get amethyst shards we need more tech books and right now we have one tech book which is not many and i also don't think there are any quests for us to claim there are not and so there are a few things we can do we can obviously take all of our 
backup bronze that we have here and use that to craft really as many tech books as it will allow us to make. 43 is probably enough, actually. If we wanted to make more, people have reminded me that we can make bronze incredibly fast using the Jumbo Furnace, which is something I had completely forgotten about, but throwing like three stacks of copper and one stack of tin into the Jumbo Furnace will get us a stack of bronze much, much faster than the Induction Smelter can do it. Uh, either way, though, now, if we were to head on back down to Orzaros, we should be able to purchase, not that ore, Isaac, don't buy the wrong one, we should be able to purchase the Sapphire Ore, as well as the Peridot Ore. And then on top of that, we can also go back over to Basic Research, we can purchase a Draw Controller, and we can place that Draw Controller right about here. That is, of course, going to get an Export Cable, and I think that might be potentially the last cable that we need so we're close to being able to fill in all of the uh, the holes in the ground because the floor is getting a little bit messy here real quick do i have what it takes to make yet more network cable i do not that would have been too easy i think i do have more stone available though i do indeed i smelted up a stack of it earlier in the episode and so let's just go ahead and do something like this and then ideally try and get that last cable down fantastic uh, and then we can start exporting what it is we want to export let me make sure i lock both these drawers just in case anything else rogue ends up in there we're going to export the advanced technium we're also going to export the electrum gears the signalum and the lead plates so electrum gears signalum and not lead plates sorry lead sheet metal is what we want to export we'll put all of those into here lead sheet metal signalum and electrum gears fantastic and yeah now we just need to go and replace some miners as i mentioned earlier i'm going to replace the colored stone miner and I'm also going to get one more miner to replace the fluid absorber that we took away for the lava. So uh, we're going to go and put, I guess, sapphire maybe over... Actually, I'm going to put uh, peridot at the back here because I think the, uh, the red and the blue is going to look better next to each other. Although we do already have blue there. So you know what? Actually, no, I'll put sapphire at the back here and we'll put uh, peridot at the front just to break things up a little bit. So over here, we'll do three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We'll do a few of those. I do have to uh, set this back to... No restrictions. Again, shift and scroll to do that. Fantastic. The miner can go here, like that. And we'll put a draw on that in just a second. And let's go do the same thing with Peridot. And then let's get all of this hooked up to our central processing system. We'll make sure that they both have draws over by the main draw wall. And then we can then start exporting all three of them over to the induction smelter. All right. I think we are good to go. I did have to swap out the frame on this one from uh, blue to gold. But this is now working. We have the Peridot being made and extracted. Uh, we could upgrade the capstones as well if we need. Uh, if we find that we need more. The same is true for the sapphire as well. Uh, the rubies, to be fair, we're only using the, the coal cap, so the uh, rubies are just as slow as the uh, Peridot. Uh, the sapphire is coming in the fastest now, but I think that's completely fine. And I did add them to the filter over here, so they're all going to the same place that the ruby all went, which is down at around to these induction smelters. And so now we should have everything we need to actually uh, export all of this and produce the elite technium automatically so i'll take one of each and we will just go over to our induction smelter i am going to make one more stock upgrade for this and i think we'll limit it to two of each resource thankfully the stock upgrades are super easy and we're going to throw that in again the floor is even worse now but we're going to throw that in here like that and i think we do need oh no we don't need two of these because you can put one in and then you can right click it to make the number higher so boom boom and then boom, boom, fantastic. That's gonna keep two of each of those in the induction smelter. We can also throw these ones in. None of these have got integral components. And by the way, we're just connecting these up to the pre-existing power. And then I added two more lapidary dynamos back here. Again, these could do with um, upgrades. The middle ones were upgraded, but the other two, the new ones have not been. Uh, initially, I was just gonna have the new machines like this, and I was gonna put two lapidary dynamos here, but it seemed like it was gonna make more sense just to do a quick one of these and then connect everything up to the main network. It looks like power is doing fine and there we go amethyst shards are being produced those are going to go into there the draw is locked for now but that's fine and then over here we can just do this and we should now be good to go again let me clear out my inventory just a little bit of all of the junk that we probably don't need to be carrying around with us at all times also i didn't mention it but i have tripled up on the coke ovens here because we're now using it of course for steel and we're also using it for the uh, basic technium as well. And so we've got three of these. Uh, all of them are getting coal via the export cables. All of them have a pump. They're all pumping around to the fluid trash can, which is now over here. And I've just thrown down 
a bunch of hoppers. So there's like a line of hoppers that goes from here across to the pre-existing hopper that feeds into the uh, the cold cock draw. So that's the current uh, the current setup for that. We are backing up on that, but um, that's to be expected. So let us turn this off. I also think I turned off, I had a feeling I turned off another recipe earlier, but I don't recall which one it was. Was it this one? I did turn this one off. That can be turned back on now. That's all good. So over here, let's get this going. We need eight sheet metal. We need one advanced technium. We need, I think, four of you. And then I think it's eight signalum and four amethyst shards. The amethyst shards do take a little while. Also, it helps if you uh, set this to output on the right and you turn auto eject on. That should push that out in just a second as soon as the bar fills up. It does indeed. Fantastic. And yeah, we should be good to go. So we'll take four of those. Uh, those should get exported to here, of course, as soon as we add the shards to the export cable. There we go. And then in here, let us get this set up. So you're going to go there. We're going to turn off auto craft. We're going to go one, two, three, and four like that. We're then going to have the four electrum gears around that, like so. And then, of course, the lead sheet metal is going to go in the corners and the center sides. And then around that is just the signalum, like so. Shift left click, turn that off, and then left click. Perfect. Turn it back on. And we should be good to go. I do need a storage downgrade on that final draw there. But with that, I think we have the first three tiers. Uh, let me just check that all of these are downgraded. I think they are. I'm pretty sure that, yeah, all of those are downgraded. Fantastic. So, yeah, we have the first three tiers of Technium. That's basic, advanced, and elite. All automated. There are, of course, going to be bottlenecks uh, right now. Did I set this to export Technium? I did. But for some reason... Oh, I didn't put uh, a thing on there. That's my bad, actually. We do have some spare link cable. I was like, why is that not connecting? And it's because I have not connected it up to the network. That is going to be a big reason as to why that doesn't work. Let's get uh, our cable, and let's just do one of these. One, two, and three. Fantastic. That should now send that over. It does indeed. And there we go. We're getting Elite Technium automatically. And so... Now, we kind of have access to basically, I think, all of the elite research. I don't think any of these are going to be particularly difficult. The Angel Ring, for example, Creative Flight, is almost at our fingertips here. Four Elite Technium, four blocks of gold, and a research paper. With the Elite Technium coming in automatically, we can just buy that, right? That's not going to be a problem, I don't think. You know, unlocking 10 pans, unlocking Flux Networks. Flux Networks is just Ender Pearls. Ender Pearls in this pack can be made in the Blast Chiller with Resonant Ender. And that can't be the only recipe. Maybe the Ender Pearl Fragments have a better recipe. Or maybe I have to buy Ender Ore. Oh, okay, maybe that's, that's something we've got to unlock. But anyway, the point is that going forward, the Technium is probably not going to be our limiting factor for Tier 1, 2, and 3 researchers. Obviously, the tiers after that are still going to be tricky for us because we don't have the next tier, which I think is Ultimate. Yeah, we don't have Ultimate Technium automated, but the first three tiers are automated and, uh, and should be good to go. The slowest part by the looks of it is amethyst but again that's kind of be expected and of course we can make basically all of this faster fairly easily with integral components and uh, just more power for the most part real quick let me uh, begin filling all of this in so that uh, the twitch chat will stop complaining about the giant gaping holes in the ground that are all around the base which is is fair these uh, were never intended to be exposed for eternity but uh, next time we'll come back and we'll do some research we'll start unlocking some stuff like as soon as we possibly can and after that, we uh, can kind of start looking at uh, the next chapter. We can start looking at the ultimate chapter. I don't know if we finished the elite chapter. I don't think we have. We're very close to actually. We've done most of the quests in the elite chapter. It looks like the only thing we haven't done is probably make Signalum Dust. And the reason for that is just we didn't need Signalum Dust. But if I take uh, a piece of Signalum, which is actually in here, we can uh, quickly pulverize that. And, uh, and that's going to complete the quest for us. It's not going to be a problem at all. I did not think about the fact that this could be a problem. Interesting. I think this does have a redstone port. It does. And so we can turn this off. we got two options here. We can either put a void upgrade in, or we could set up some kind of system to turn off the bottling plant when this draw gets full. For now, I'm just going to throw a void upgrade in next. I don't think it really matters if we lose a little bit of glass or lava, but... We could potentially look at setting up a, a more sophisticated, you know, redstone system in the future to turn that off if we find it's necessary. But as I was saying, if we quickly go and throw this signalum into a pulverizer, that should get us the signalum dust and should basically uh, kind of close out quite nicely the Elite Tech questline. Nice. We'll claim our free tech book. 
and that's it they're all done and we're on to ultimate tech of course we've got our diamonds next time we'll come back we'll set up uh, a new area with new miners for diamonds and emeralds not quite sure what we're going to do with that yet maybe we'll go with like a lower platform maybe we'll go with the bigger platform maybe we'll set up some new areas kind of around in the gaps potentially uh, i'm not quite decided on how it's going to work but then we can start working with mechanism power and begin working towards the ultimate technium I don't think we'll do that next episode. I think next episode we'll do a little bit of intermediate stuff. You know, we'll unlock things potentially like the time in the bottle. We'll unlock some creative flight potentially. Uh, we'll look at unlocking just a bunch of stuff that's available here. You know, potentially Xnet, uh, Laser IO, the Angel Ring, all that kind of stuff is, uh, is going to be pretty good for us to automate. And we can look at uh, kind of improving our quality of life uh, before we progress forward to kind of the next half of the quest book. We've done three Techniums. There is Ultimate, Hellish, and Void. So there's three down, three to go. Uh, but that is a problem for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Techopolis 2 there.